Ah, uh, Belfast. It's been quite some time, hasn't it? Still quite popular as well, after all. <laughs> She's one of the ships that really reminds me of everything that happened from the starting days. Seeing her all the time in PvP, the joke loading screen she had back then, and obviously her role in the anime. You know, now that I think about it, Yen they really had her and Enterprise around each other all the time. Sure, she was tasked with looking after Enterprise and had to deal with a lot of her own bad habits, but it really felt like a shipping was trying to be made between the two of them. Not a terrible thing, mind you, since it's not the first time the community shipped two girls together. Don't get me wrong, though, nothing really comes close to the OTP that is Helena Cleveland. I mean, they even have little versions of themselves, so this pairing has absolutely nothing on- Oh, are you kid- Alright, well, we're diving into one of our older ship girls from the Royal Navy, HMS Belfast herself. Now, Belfast has been around a long time, so she's quite well known in more ways than one. That said, though, she's up today, so let's see how she fares even among the newer light cruisers within her own ranks. It's actually a bit surprising how many light cruisers the Royal Navy has, especially in the SR category. I mean, most factions have around four in their roster, no matter which faction. Uh, um, that's only five. I I swear. Anyway, moving on. We'll be comparing against her fellow HMS SR's light cruisers and seeing how she fares against all of the ones from every faction as well, after all. First up is Belfast's survival stats, in which her health pool puts her among the top with her Royal Navy allies. Even among all of the SRs in general, she's well above the average in this stat, which means that she'll be decent at tanking compared to most of them. Now, her armor type is light, so while she may be able to handle battleship AP rounds and torpedoes a bit better, she'll definitely struggle with most HE attacks, so be very careful when engaging enemies with that weaponry. Her evasion actually is pretty much tied among most of the Royal Navy light cruisers, but remains average when compared against all cruisers from various factions. This just means that she's as likely to dodge attacks as really anyone else in the group. However, this combined with a decent sized health pool actually does give her a bit of an advantage overall in terms of tanking. Lastly, Belfast's anti-air, uh, it's really not that great. She loses to most of the Royal Navy light cruisers and that trend pretty much mirrors across all factions as well. So, she won't be as effective at tanking plane attacks or shooting them down, but at least there's plenty of alternatives. Regardless, not a bad start considering her survival stats, but does her offense paint a similar picture? Well, Belfast's firepower beats all the Royal Navy, and even is among the highest when you look at all of the super rare light cruisers. This does give her a good gun damage advantage that could play well. Now, she does have torpedoes, and this also follows her firepower trend, as she does stand towards the top of that particular stat as well. However, as a surprise to no one, she is unable to actually beat the Sakura Empire in this department. Now, her damage output between firepower and torpedo seems to be starting off well. Lastly, though, is her reload, and it's a bit lower than a lot of the Royal Navy SRs, and seemingly average among all groups in general. This just means that she'll be a tiny bit slower when it comes to her attack cooldowns, but to be honest, the difference isn't going to make a whole lot in the end. Despite all this though, her getting good equipment wouldn't be a bad idea with the particular stat line we're seeing so far. But how does her kit hold up with the stat line? Now, Belfast is a torpedo cruiser, so she'll get a preloaded torpedo as well as the ability to hold two charges. This generally does mean that gunboat CLs with their extra main gun mount will more than likely outdamage her in gun damage. That said though, efficiency wise, her main gun does sit at 150%. This is actually pretty high for a main gun, losing only to Swisher at 155%. This just means that her guns will do considerable damage with her firepower and efficiency put together. Her torpedoes sit at 155%, which is relatively high as well, only really losing to the Sakura Empire CLs. So she'll do decent damage with the torpedoes as well. Lastly, her anti-air gun sits at 100%, which is the lowest over all factions. This combined with a low anti-air stat means that she will definitely struggle when it comes to taking out planes. Overall, Belfast seems way more focused on offense than really on just tanking and defensive situations. She has a solid damage focus to stat line that can definitely help out if need be. She's also got the health to keep going longer than most light cruisers, 
but her light armor can still be an issue if there is no proper damage control. Now, at level 120 and even level 125, we do see her get a pretty decently balanced distribution towards her stats, so that will help her at just about everything, especially in the damage department. That said, with her having a decent stat line, let's see how her skills determine her overall effectiveness. Belfast's first skill is Burn Order, which does two things. The first is that it increases her damage output with HE weaponry by up to 25%. We'll also increase her chance to ignite enemies by up to 3%. Now, I will say the second part, I'm not sure if that's going to be a lot of difference. From what I've seen and read up on, her ignition chances are still pretty low overall, so this extra 3% may not have as much of an impact as we'd like. Also, burn works in a very interesting way when you have battleships as well. Now, as for the first part of the skill, the extra HE gun damage is actually going to be quite nice, and is actually going to complement her pretty solid firepower and efficiency. I will say though that the only caveat to this particular skill, which I really don't see as a downside to be honest, is that the skill does force the use of HE weaponry on Belfast. But again, this really isn't, I don't think, a bad thing. Her second skill is Smokescreen Light Cruisers, which actually does a few things. This skill allows Belfast to deploy a smokescreen 10 seconds after the start of a fight, and every 20 seconds afterwards, with a 20% chance to happen. The smokescreen does two major things for allied ships inside of it. First is that it increases evasion rate by up to 35%. Now, quick reminder that this is evasion rate, not evasion the stat. For those that aren't entirely sure the difference between the two, this evasion rate is going to add an additional 35% chance to dodge an attack for any and all allied ships that are inside the smokescreen. If this is compared with any other evasion rate boosting skills, this can make it really, really, really tough to hit ships that are inside the smokescreen. Now, to be fair, Belfast's smokescreen is a little bit weaker than the standard one, which is at 40%. But the second part of Belfast's smokescreen reduces the damage of air-based attacks by up to 35%. This defensive bonus can be pretty powerful to work with, and it actually does somewhat offset Belfast's slower AA when it comes to damage taken. This along with an evasion rate boost, even if it is weaker, still is a very annoying thing to deal with. This is kind of part of the reason she was used in PvP in the very old days. The only downside the smokescreen has is that its position is static, and might not be the best to utilize. In manual play, if you're a person like me that plays that way, you can pretty much guarantee the dodge if you just avoid the attack altogether rather than having to rely on RNG. In auto, the randomness of its movement can cause you to completely avoid or even just barely use it. So not always exactly the best thing to have. That said though, Belfast has a decent stat line and kit to work with, but will suffer a bit as a torpedo CL. The AA weakness can definitely hurt her in areas like Chapter 13. Now her seniority might have her a bit out of the meta tiers, but she's still very much capable of dishing out damage where she's needed. But this does bring up the question of why use her? To which I'd say, well, it really depends on whether you're running an HMS fleet, she's your only option, or she's your waifu. Let's face it, she's got some lovely skins. Now, the real question is, boss or mob fleet vanguard? It's been some time since her peak, so there are plenty of ships that can easily outperform her in the boss vanguard side. That said, she can still work in boss if you don't have a lot of options, especially for newer players. Her smokescreen will probably be the biggest advantage if you find your vanguards are struggling a bit in the terms of survival. Now, the same could be said about her in mob fleets. Her burn order skill, though, will help out a lot with the abundance of light armor enemies on the field, and she'll be able to do pretty solid damage to them in general. So she can work at both, but it really just comes down to where you need her more. Regardless, this headmaid will do her best to take care of your needs with what she can provide, so make sure you take care of her yourself. And that is going to be all for the Headmaid Belfast. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and that it helps you in your future endeavors. Up next is another one of our PR1 ships, the KMS Cruiser Rune. Oh god. Anyway, and afterwards is going to be the Sword Maid herself, Cirrus. So, look forward to their videos when it comes out. Whether you're a regular viewer or a patron supporting the channel on Patreon, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys all again real soon.